Something the Lord Made is an American drama film based on true events and released in the year 2004. The plot of the film follows the 34-year-old partnership of the black carpenter Vivian Thomas and white surgeon Alfred Blaylock, aka the Blue Baby Doctor, who together resolved the Blue Baby Syndrome. Though the two of them equally found their way to success, only Alfred is allowed to receive a claim due to the prevailing racism at that time. Set in 1930, the film starts in the Depression era in Nashville. Vivian Thomas, a black carpenter, is seen working passionately at a mansion. Lodel, the owner of the place, is impressed to see Vivian's determination and awards him with extra money. During the Depression era, the colored people were looked down upon and treated inferiorly by the white people. Vivian's friend, Charlie, informs him that he got him a job at Vanderbilt Experimental Surgery Laboratory as an assistant of Dr. Alfred Blaylock. Vivian finds it difficult to believe, but Charlie manages to take him to the lab. Inside the hospital, Vivian is pleased to meet the eccentric and arrogant doctor, Alfred Blaylock, and he questions him about his nature of work. Alfred explains that he's a medical researcher who pushes the limits of surgery using stray dogs. Alfred tells him that he will have to perform ordinary scut work for the dogs to keep the place hygienic. Later, on the bus, Vivian meets with his girlfriend Clara who congratulates him on landing a job at a decent place. It turns out that the two of them have been wanting to get married once Vivian gets employed and becomes capable enough to run a family. Soon, Vivian starts his janitorial work at the lab whilst also reading the medical books of Dr. Alfred. One day, Alfred spots him reading one of his books. Out of curiosity, he asks Vivian if he actually is a carpenter. Vivian elucidates that he always wanted to become a doctor for which he saved enough money but ended up not going to medical college. Hearing his inspiring ambitions, Alfred asks him the name of a lab apparatus and becomes highly impressed when Vivian names it correctly. To further test Vivian, he tests his manual skills and is surprised after seeing his coordinated hand and finger movements. He gives Vivian a lab court, making him his research partner in his endeavor. Soon, Vivian, even more, enthralls Alfred with his intellectual acumen and becomes an indispensable part of Alfred's research. One day, while walking with Clara on the street, Vivian discovers that the bank that has all his savings is shut down. Seeing the people protesting for their lifelong savings, Vivian joins the protest for the money he saved for his college for seven years. Later, Vivian along with his entire family mourn over the loss of their savings. Having no other choice, Vivian goes back to his normal routine, working in the lab. One day, Alfred tells him to make an incision on an anesthetized dog to study traumatic shock. Although Vivian initially hesitates, Alfred assures him that he can perform the surgery. Vivian successfully pulls through, but at the end of it, Alfred loses his temper after he finds out that Vivian did not turn on a smoked drum that is supposed to record the observations. Out of frustration, he bursts onto Vivian for wasting his entire day of research. Vivian feels dejected and leaves the lab. However, just then, Alfred notices his notebook in which Vivian has noted down all the steps and observation in utmost detail. Embarrassed, Alfred rushes to Vivian apologizing for his harsh attitude and assuring him that it will never happen again. The film then transitions to 1943 when Alfred and Vivian move to Baltimore from Vanderbilt to Johns Hopkins. Alfred holds a party to celebrate the best surgeons in the country and makes a motivational speech to accomplish great things together. It turns out that John Hopkins is a kind of institute where the only black employees are janitors and where Vivian works as a bartender. During the party, Alfred runs into Dr. Helen Tausig, a well-known pediatrician who brings to light the issue of congenitally malformed hearts that has been written off as untreatable for years. She suggests that the congenital heart defect of treadology of Fallot, also known as Blue Baby Syndrome, can be treated. In simple terms, it's the blockage in the main artery to the lung which causes the babies to suffocate to death. While other doctors contemplate whether or not the syndrome is curable, Vivian keeps releasing clauses of his imagination to Alfred, leaving Helen bewildered. After the party, Vivian returns home to his wife and daughters. Clara does not like the city and insists on moving back to Nashville. Vivian explains to her that he cannot give up the opportunity to work with the top surgeon in the country at a reputable hospital and requests her to let him live his dream. On his first day of work, Vivian is asked to enter the lab from the rear entrance as all the black employees enter from there. 
Although Alfred protests against it, the security clarifies that the rules can't be bent for anyone. As Vivian enters the lab from the back door, the hospital staff is perplexed to see him in the white coat. While clearing out the lab for Alfred, the director of the laboratories is agitated to see Vivian in the lab and humiliates him by ordering him around as if he's a T-boy. Vivian denies complying, making him even more furious. Later, Vivian and Alfred meet Helen who challenges them to come up with a surgical solution to treat the blue baby syndrome. She elucidates that she needs a new ductus for the babies to oxygenate their blood. Vivian and Alfred feel pity to see the innocent kids admitted to the hospital for this particular syndrome, which makes them determined to take this task on. After spending days on theoretical research, Alfred decides to start the experimental work on a dog by deliberately creating a heart defect in it and then working towards finding a cure. He tells Vivian that since he's busy with a lot of surgical cases, Vivian will have to do a major chunk of work on the blue baby cases. At night, Alfred spends time with his colleagues playing snooker. His friends ask him why Vivian is so dear to him to which Alfred describes that he has been working with him for 12 years and has a cooperative relationship with him. They also talk about the rumor circulating that Alfred is contemplating doing heart surgery. They try to demotivate him and relish the thought of seeing him fail, but to their surprise, Alfred does not back out but instead tells him that he will somehow manage to come up with a solution. After spending all day working tirelessly at the hospital, Vivian returns home and mends the household accessories of the landlord to cover his rent. A few months into the research, Alfred expresses frustration for not coming up with a solution. Seeing him discouraged, Vivian fetches a respirator from a machine shop which makes Alfred excited. Alfred's busy schedule keeps him from spending time with his family. His wife and daughter spend days without seeing him, making him feel guilty. On the other hand, Vivian starts experimenting on a test dog using the respirator. Another doctor from the hospital is inspired to see Vivian working with utmost precision. Soon, Vivian's brother Harold, who has been fighting for racial laws as a lawyer, pays him a visit. Seeing the racial discrimination in Baltimore, he suggests Vivian leave the place and quit his dead-end job. When Vivian tells him that he has been working on important research, Harold reminds him not to overwork himself without getting compensated. This triggers Vivian and he goes to the hospital receptionist to check his job classification. When the receptionist informs him that he's classified as a maintenance worker instead of a lab technician, he feels exploited. This affects his lab performance and he complains to Alfred that he's being underpaid. Alfred advises him not to pay attention to bureaucratic details and focus on what he loves doing. This annoys Vivian and he takes an off from work. Just after he leaves, Alfred finds out that Vivian has successfully created the blue baby's heart in the dog. Puzzled, he discusses with his wife what he should do to satisfy Vivian to which she suggests sending him to medical school. Alfred knows that he can't send him away so he gets him promoted to surgical technician which automatically increases his pay. Soon. The duo comes up with a solution to treat the heart defects and test it out on the defective dog. Alfred praises Vivian's surgical skills as being like something the Lord made. When the outcome seems promising, Alfred decides to test it out on a baby girl with blue baby syndrome for which he seeks permission from her parents. The parents demand some time to think over and discuss it with a priest who condemns them for letting any doctor mess with the baby's heart. Soon. Alfred and Vivian find out that the dog they operated on collapsed due to some mistake but they are unable to figure out what went wrong. One night, Vivian sees the grown up girl on whom they are supposed to perform the surgery in a dream. The girl was crying because she was dying. Vivian asks why she is dying in the dream and she says it's because she has a baby heart. The following morning, he tells Alfred about it who interprets it as the fact that their sewing technique didn't work because the sutures didn't grow with the heart. So, the two of them start working on a new sewing technique. In the quest to save the dying blue babies, the two of them discover a solution to the problem and operate it on the defective dog. The entire lab watches them from the outside, admiring Vivian's gifted surgical techniques. Before performing the surgery on the baby girl, many doctors try to persuade Alfred not to rush the surgery until he has enough experience in the particular surgical technique but Alfred turns a deaf ear to them. The night before the surgery, Alfred loses his sleep out of anxiety and nervousness. On the surgery day, right before starting up, Alfred insists that Vivian assist him through the first blue baby surgery going against the rules of Hopkins administrators. Despite the prevailing racism of the time, Vivian joins the surgery. 
During the surgery, Alfred makes a mistake once by unintentionally cutting an artery in the wrong place, but with Vivian's assistance, he fixes his mistakes and completes the surgery. Soon the news of the successful surgery spreads like wildfire and parents from all across the country arrive at the hospital to book an appointment with Alfred to get their sick children treated. Along with that, doctors from around the world start attending the surgery to learn how to do the surgery themselves. While Alfred is publicly acknowledged for the success, Vivian is left out as he does not hold the title of a doctor. Seeing Vivian dejected, Clara consoles him but is unable to eradicate his feeling of void. One day, Vivian attends Alfred's parties as a bartender where Alfred is honored as the first doctor to successfully perform heart surgery. As Alfred makes a thank you speech, Vivian watches from behind a potted palm at the rear of the ballroom. He feels miserable when Alfred gives credit to all the other doctors who assisted in the work, but does not mention Vivian or his contributions. Heartbroken, he returns home, thinking all his efforts went away in vain. The following day, he submits his resignation letter to the office due to a lack of acknowledgement. When Alfred finds out about it, he confronts Vivian who reveals that he snuck into his party the other night and listened to his speech. Alfred persuades him to make use of his gifted hands and make a change in the world, but Vivian knows that he will always remain invisible to the world so he quits the lab. Desperate to get the degree quickly, he heads to a college and discusses with the dean to allow him to complete his studies earlier than the usual duration. He mentions that he was part of the groundbreaking research on the blue baby syndrome, but despite that, the dean refuses to let him graduate early. Seeing no other option, he starts a job as a salesman for a pharmaceutical company to make a living. Sometime later, he goes back to Nashville to his parents where he realizes that he's unable to focus on any other job since his heart is still in the lab. Clara encourages him to be where he belongs and go back to Hopkins. Embarrassed, Vivian swallows his pride and goes back to Alfred to continue working in the lab. He requests Alfred to assign him his old position and expresses his love for the work he did. The film transitions to 1964, when Vivian becomes the director of the laboratories. He's now become a professional surgeon and trainer in open heart surgery. Alfred asks him to assist him with a new opportunity that Columbia has offered him, but Vivian turns it down as he feels fulfilled with the job he does which is working with young doctors. Alfred seems disoriented and makes vague statements about his regrets in life before leaving for home. The next morning, Helen informs Vivian that Alfred passed away in his sleep at night. Disheartened, Vivian continues Alfred's work at John Hopkins teaching surgeons. In 1976, the Institute recognized Vivian's contributions to medical sciences in a formal ceremony and awarded him an honorary doctorate degree based on his groundbreaking work. Clara and Harold, along with all the other doctors, applaud Vivian in the auditorium. Vivian, who's not accustomed to being in the limelight, feels overwhelmed by the love and acknowledgement and thanks his family and friends for being his backbone. Helen unveils the portrait of Vivian and he's even more moved to see it. The film ends with Vivian getting emotional after he looks over his portrait being hung on the walls of John Hopkins next to Alfred's portrait and the receptionist, referring to him as Dr. Vivian Thomas over the speaker. An epilogue states that the Blue Baby Syndrome operation pioneered at John Hopkins opened a new field of heart surgery. Today, doctors in the United States perform over 1,750,000 heart operations per year. This movie has a rating of 8.1 on IMDb. I hope you all liked this video. If yes, then make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more movie recaps.